So in this video I'm going to go over what blueprints are uh, in Unreal 4 and I'm going to talk about scripting and what you can do with that uh, in Unreal 4 too. So what are blueprints? Well, to kind of get into that we should first of all talk about programming languages. So usually if you're creating functionality for a game you'd be using Visual Studio or a program like that and writing scripts uh, using your keyboard. Now if you're like me um, I really don't like this way of working. Um, I'm kind of more visual based uh, so writing scripts like this really doesn't appeal to me. So what Unreal 4 has instead or in conjunction with this is a system called Blueprints where it's basically drag and drop where you can connect these nodes together um, which contain all the code for you and you can achieve the same functionality uh, as you would with uh, C++. There are some drawbacks to that though where all these uh, nodes that you see here have been written using C++ so whatever you have in Unreal 4 um, is what you're going to get. You won't be able to create new nodes without using C++. But out of the stock UE4 program you've got quite a lot uh, to use and you can achieve quite a lot from that. You might remember that this is a system quite similar uh, to Kismet which was used in Unreal 4 or sorry Unreal 3 or UDK. The only difference uh, being is in Kismet it was all level based coding which means that if you made a fantastic piece uh, of visual scripting in Unreal 3 and then you wanted to use it in a different level you would either have to copy and paste that or you would have to completely re-script it again and it wasn't the greatest uh, bit of kit. But in Unreal 4 what you have now is basically class based blueprints which means that you can make a class um, such as like maybe an exploding barrel and all you can all you have to do then is drag and drop that in your level and it will all contain the functionality of the scripting that you made so there isn't any copy and pasting of the code. So what's the logic behind blueprints? Well if you take this scene of ours we've got a few lights in it. We've got a player start. Um, if I was to press play basically within this here scene we've got lights but there's no way to interact with them because none of the objects in here except for the player that I'm controlling has any scripting attached to it so they really don't have any functionality. If you wanted to uh, you can use level blueprints okay, to add functionality to existing objects in a scene or you can use class blueprints okay, to basically make an object that contains a component such as an light and add that to the scene with functionality. So uh, first of all we'll just go through the blueprint editor that you can find in Unreal 4. Um, there's a few ways to go about it. Uh, first of all I'm going to show you how to make a level blueprint um, or where to start with one uh, and then I'll show you how to make a class based blueprint as well. So your level blueprint um, obviously you have to have a level open uh, but you can find it at the top here on this toolbar under blueprints. So if I click there and just in the middle section you've got open level blueprint. So this here is the blueprint editor um, and what you'll find is pretty basic to start off with uh, especially in the level one because it doesn't really have any components to it. Uh, on the right hand side you'll find the details panel okay so these are kind of like the options or attributes that you can turn off and on to do with this blueprint. Uh, on the left hand side are any of the events or variables that you've made. Um, you can see that there's only event begin play and event tick which I'll talk about later on. At the top is your compile button. Uh, this is pretty important um, if you make any changes to the script in here uh, you're going to have to compile it and if you get an error it'll tell you where to uh, fix that. Uh, you can save it uh, and you can also play the game from here as well. 
So let's talk about the event graph, the main area, okay, in your Blueprint Editor. Um, what you'll find is usually when you make uh, a Blueprint class or you go into the level Blueprint, you're going to find uh, two nodes already created for you. Um, you've got the event begin play and event tick. So the event begin play, um, this happens or this gets executed once you press play and it only happens once in a level. Okay. Event tick happens every frame. So every frame of the game that you're playing, this here node gets executed. And what I mean by executed is we've got this execution node here and this kind of fires off to another node. Maybe that has some functionality for say a light that dims it or something like that. So if you wanted to, that to happen at the start of the level, you'd use event begin play. But if you wanted maybe to check a, a variable to make sure that you know a float was in below zero or something like that every frame, you could use an event tick to do that. But you'd always want to use event tick sparingly uh, just because it eats up a lot of resources. So if you wanted to create new nodes, uh, the best way to do that is to right click and you can search here for nodes or you can go through all these different tabs and find nodes. Usually it's just easier to search for them. Or you can pull out from an execution node, let go, <clears throat> and it will be context sensitive to what you can actually establish with this execution node. Uh, and we can make more variables up here in the left and I'll go through that in a little bit. But for instance, if I was to make a new variable here uh, and just type in test, I can click and drag that into my scene and you can see I've got like a get and a set. Okay, a get just lets me get the value of this variable. So whatever value that's holding. And if I pull out again and get set, this lets me set this value. Okay, so at the minute this is a boolean which is like on or off or true or false. So I can set it by clicking this box. You know, that means false, that means true. And then this here, get holds that value, okay? So that's the basics of, you know, getting and set. But this here node actually won't set or do anything unless we um, string it up with another execution node. So for instance, if I've got this event begin play, um, plug it into my set, that means at the start of the level, it's going to set this variable test to false because that's not ticked. But if I tick that, it's going to set this to true at the beginning of the level. Uh, and it means then we can, you know, start add functionality based off connecting these nodes together. So for instance, if I've got this test uh, value here, because this is a get, I can pull this out, type in branch, and then I can connect this branch up to the set. So you can see you can string them along. And basically what's going to happen here is at the beginning of the game, it's going to set this to true. Okay, It all happens in sequence, remember that. And then this branch is going to check this condition. So it's going to check basically the value of test. And it's going to fire off either one of these based on this value. So if this is true, it's going to fire that off. But if I change that to false, it's going to fire that off. Um, to kind of show you the basics of that, I'm just going to minimize this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of my lights here. Okay. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down. And you can see here in the details panel for this, uh, it's visible. And I can turn that light on and off. Okay. What I want to do is have that selected open up my level blueprint editor and if I right click you can see that Unreal 4 recognizes that I've got that light selected it's context sensitive okay and what I can do is I can create a reference to that point light it's called point light 4 so now I've got a reference to that light and what I can do is if I pull out from this blue node you can see it's color co coordinated um, that's going to just help you recognize what variable type it is. Uh, if it's a blue color like this, it just means it's an object. And this here menu is also context sensitive. So if I type in visibility, you can see I can turn on set actor hidden in game. And this box needs to be selected because it's false at the minute. So what I want to do is turn that to true. 
So what we have here is our first bit of script and we've got event begin play. Okay, and this is going to fire off once we press play. And what it's going to do is it's going to take that point light and it's going to set it to hidden. So if I compile this, remember I've made changes to the script, so I'm just going to compile it. And it's saying I'm good to go, so that's good. So if I press play now, you'll see that that light has turned off. So if I press escape, in my editor it's on, but if I press play, it's turned it off. To see that effect a bit better, what we can do is, I'm going to pull out from this node again. I'm going to add in a delay. So if I type in delay, you see I've got this delay node. And basically all this is going to do is, it's going to fire off once we press play. But this delay is going to stop it from hitting this set actor hidden in game straight away. So we can hit a delay of maybe a second. And then if we hit compile, press play, after a second the light will go off. And the cool thing about these scripts, um, basically what I can do is visualize and see them working in real time. So if I press play at the start of this, you can see my script is firing off and then there's a delay and then it fires off the set actor hidden in game. So I can make that delay maybe five seconds, compile it, press play. You can see it's counting down even to five seconds and then it turns the light off. So that's the first bit of functionality that you can add into your game. Now, the problem with this here is if I wanted to turn all these lights off, there's a few ways I can do it, but I would have to actually make new scripting, okay? So my level blueprint, there's no way I can drag and drop a new light in here which will have all that functionality on. If I wanted a new light to do that, I I could plug in more references to this target. Um, it might get a bit messy, but it would work. But if I wanted to add additional functionality or anything like that, it just becomes really cumbersome and unwieldy. And this is where class blueprints come in. So what we can do is just exit out of our level blueprint. <coughs> And I'm going to make a folder here, and I'm just going to call it Blueprints. Let me just delete that a second. So this here is your content browser, okay? So this here has all your assets. Uh, I don't have one for Blueprints, so I'm just going to make one. It's a new folder, Blueprints. And in here, if I right-click, I can create new assets and you can see one of the most prominent ones here is a blueprint class. So if I click on that, I'm going to be able to choose uh, from what's called a parent class. Uh, and these are kind of like pre-made classes that you can use and they have some functionality already added to them. So for instance, if I wanted to make like a character, so something that had movement or something like that, I would use the character class. Or if I wanted to make a, a game mode, I would have the game mode. Or for us, if we just wanted to use objects that are going to be placed or spawned in the world, we're going to use an actor class. And this is probably the most, or the one class that you're going to use the most. And I'm just going to call this light. And open it up. So you can see this is slightly different from your level blueprint. I'll just open up the level one again. So the level one basically just had the event graph, okay? But if I go to my new blueprint, um, which I'll name later, you can see that we've also got this viewport, okay? And the camera controls work as they do in the editor in here. Uh, we also have a tab up here for our construction script, which we'll go over in later videos. And then we've got our event graph. And the event graph is basically the same as the event graph in the level blueprint. It also has some pre-made nodes for us. It's got event begin play. 
it's got this event actor overlap or begin overlap which we're not going to use and it's also got the event tick so this here again fires off every frame this here fires off if something overlaps with our blueprint and this here one again fires off when we press play um, you can also see that we've got this components section so in our level one we didn't have that and this is quite handy because in here we can start adding in new components if I click on the drop down you can see there's quite a lot of different types of components that we can add in we've got a search bar here so I'm just going to type in light and you can see we've got the different types and I'm just going to choose point light so those are the same type of lights that we have in our level already if I go back to my viewport you can see we've got our light in here and what we can do is we can compile and save this it doesn't have any coding but we can drag and drop this into the level so I'm just going to delete that light over there so I'm just placing it in my level <coughs> for press play you notice that light doesn't do anything yet after five seconds this here one should go off so back to that blueprint what we can do now is we can add in the same functionality that we had in our level blueprint so I'm just going to drag this point light over get a reference to it and then I'm going to pull out this here and uh, it's context sensitive remember so I'm just going to type in hidden and you can see I've got this set hidden in game uh, I'm going to get a delay node and set it for five seconds and uh, when that's completed then it's going to set this to hidden I'm going to click this box remember to set that uh, to true and then this is another box that you didn't find in the level one and this is just because uh, the way the components work I, I could have a child of the point light or something associated to the point light which means that if it was associated and I had that true that also would be hidden in game as well so if we compile and save that and then click play after five seconds both these lights should turn off yeah. so if I go back to my level blueprint I'm just going to delete the script and for that compile and save it and then I'm going to delete all the lights in my scene and the cool thing about this blueprint is which I'm going to name it light I can drag this into my scene now and I can drag another one in and they'll all contain the same functionality so I don't have to duplicate coding or scripting or anything like that it's all done for me so when I press play now after five seconds all these lights should turn off and that's the basics between uh, level blueprints and class blueprints so just remember that a level blueprint is okay to use sometimes but mainly you should be using class blueprints because it's much more efficient uh, you don't have to redo any work and if you wanted to make the light slightly different later on when we go into some variables uh, especially public variables <clears throat> we'll be able to change a lot of the uh, attributes of uh, individual blueprints even though that they're the same class